Um, my name is Manav. I'm one of the founders and the CEO of the More App. We're a healthcare technology company that is a little over four years old now and based in San Francisco. And really at our core, um, you know, what we do is we kind of focus on three areas, messaging, monitoring, and management, right? Uh, making sure that we can guide a patient through an entire plan or care journey that they're going through. Second, monitor them along the way, whether that's device or deviceless. And then third is properly integrate that into the current workflow that systems may have so that all that information can be managed. We to date have worked with a little over 50 healthcare systems across the country, uh, have worked in you know, the context of federally qualified health centers. We've worked with IPAs. You know, we've worked with really large academics, really large community systems. So kind of across the spectrum and more than anything, what that has resulted in for us is a uh, very just deep understanding of how population or how different types of populations engage with technologies like this. And the most fundamental learning from that has been that you know, it's extremely difficult to deploy a lot of these different types of technologies, whether it's remote monitoring, whether it's patient engagement, whether it's, um, you know, appointment related management, PRO collection, whatever it is, kind of as an isolated system or a system that says, look, we are solely responsible for this singular dashboard for this singular, you know, connected device that we want to implement, right? One, it makes it extremely challenging for clinicians to be able to adopt. And then second, um, it doesn't necessarily provide all of the, the right context for how a patient is actually performing. So we've taken kind of a different approach from most companies when it comes to remote monitoring, where we've actually started with qualitative engagement and then use that to identify where remote monitoring is needed. Um, and that kind of brings me to the, the core problem that Memora solves, which is you know, fundamentally that patient communication and the processes that healthcare organizations traditionally use to aggregate information on how patients are doing is highly fragmented, right? So some of that information may come in from phone calls and end up in notes that are not you know, referenced ever again. Some of it may exist in an access center compared to existing um, on the clinical side, right? Some of it is in symptom trackers and FAQ sheets. Um, and as a result, on the patient side, there's eight to 10 different channels that they're often looking at and getting access to information from. And it's difficult for them to understand uh, what is my you know, core source of truth that I should be relying on. And then second, in parallel to that, it's extremely difficult for a provider to have a comprehensive view of this is exactly the journey that my patient went through, all of the information that they received, what they actually retained, and what data they actually tried to report back to me, right, in a very actionable way, right, instead of the scattered process that exists. And apologies, I think the biggest takeaway as a result of that is remote monitoring, particularly during COVID, has has obviously started to take off, right? And there's uh, this twofold reasoning behind it. One, that there's just such a critical need for us to meet patients where they are and to establish a stronger presence in the home uh, so that we can remotely identify how patients are performing and identify who's at risk. Um, and then second, in parallel to that, you know, uh, the reality is that remote monitoring is a great vehicle in the status quo to drive more revenue per clinician, right? By taking all of these processes that people may be doing right now in some fragmented way and centralizing it, documenting it, and making sure that it is in a reimbursable format, right? But the challenge of that is everyone has kind of jumped on the bandwagon of remote monitoring and it's resulted in, you know, a lot of sites actually having different dashboards for different devices that they're implementing or one dashboard for deviceless monitoring, one dashboard for device-based monitoring and things like that. Um, and then no qualitative component kind of looped into that. A lot of that is quantitative data that goes in one place, but there's no relation between that and messages that a patient sends in on, on a portal or something like that. And as a result, only 35% of remote monitoring interventions across the industry are effective on average. And that's just based on you know feedback that we've actually gotten from health systems that we work with, right? And then second, in parallel to that, is that uh, in most people, you know, remote monitoring is not necessarily effective if you're getting the reimbursement just because you're dumping so much data in front of the clinicians that they have to spend, you know, the 20 minute mark reviewing it, um, or they have to spend a significant amount of time review reviewing it. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's actually improving the standard of care. Um, and I think that that's true for a large majority of interventions in the sense that the average remote monitoring intervention in the industry increases the number of notifications that a clinician receives in any given day by almost 3x, right? And 
you know, part of that is indicative of the fact that patients are trying to get the attention of clinicians more. And second is that, you know, these interventions have been implemented in highly fragmented ways. So really the kind of longer term vision that Memora, you know, has had health systems buy into is that there's all these fragmented systems that people currently use to communicate with patients, right? There's EHRs, there's CRM tools on the access side, there's phone call based follow up and, and you know discharge calls that are made there's email based outreach there's portals and things like that and while all of these to some degree will in some part of communication it remains so fragmented that it's impossible to understand how a patient is comprehensively performing and the second reality as a part of that is that at the end of the day you know this process that every system goes through of trying to cram care delivery interventions into the medical record is increasingly accruing will you know we on the, the tech side would call technical debt um, in the sense that clinicians are becoming increasingly frustrated with how their EMRs are performing. And uh, you know that process has only gotten worse and worse over time. Second is that at the end of the day, it is still, you know, there's not a single system that you can really point to and say, that system has helped me revolutionize how I deliver care for a patient. And it has fundamentally changed my day-to-day -day process, right? And that you know hasn't come by in almost 15 years since EHRs became highly adopted. So Memora at its core is an orchestration platform that does a couple of things, right? And I mentioned we have kind of reversed the model of most sites where when we start working with an organization, the goal is to take all of these different communication channels that currently exist and say, you know, maybe your appointment related messages exist in your CRM, maybe your clinical outreach exists in your EHR, maybe, you know, you have some phone calls that your nurses are making as well and have to manually document right now and spend you know, $20 per note they have to document on average in the industry. Um, Memora is going to come into an organization and actually build integrations into these tools to pull that data and out of those systems and orchestrate it into one platform. And the first goal of doing that quite literally, even before we get to remote monitoring is to say, here's the most comprehensive view you have of the entire journey your patient is going through, right? From this is when they got their first reminder this is the phone call that they received before their appointment. Uh, this is the PRO survey that they're receiving from this one department right now. And here is the, you know, um, additional message that they may have sent in from the portal, right? And as a result of that, we're basically saying this is almost infrastructure that is necessary to allow remote monitoring to properly scale, right? And that kind of brings about four buckets. If we're able to orchestrate all of that data properly and say, Communication at its core is the biggest driver of how a healthcare organization is able to, um, you know, communicate with their patients, retain them, make sure that their quali the quality of care is high and stuff like that. Um, we'll kind of clump that into four buckets of care pathways, PRO collection, patient access, and then remote monitoring is one of those four pillars, right? Um, and as a result of that, the goal of implementing Memora at any organization is to say all these different buckets of content that you may want to deliver. So every single intervention that you see on the slide is something that every single system wishes they had. And they probably have a large fraction of these in different solutions. The goal is to say Memora is the platform that will aggregate all of that into a singular place and give you all of the qualitative context needed to make remote monitoring function properly, right? Which kind of brings me to the next point where at our core, we've developed a comprehensive way of engaging patients. You know, we can do it in 109 different languages. We can do it through four core channels of SMS, email, IVR, and WhatsApp. Um, we can adjust frequency based on how patients are responding and intelligently understand their behavior in, in interacting with this kind of system to drive engagement and stuff like that. Um, and basically put them on this journey or this plan of Step-by-step, step, these are all the reminders and instructions that we are going to deliver to them. And then based on how they respond to that, we'll figure out who you know, is potentially at risk. Which kind of brings me to the next point of, after we've implemented a lot of that communication infrastructure and taken this communication first approach, we actually will work with sites to identify, does this patient seem most suited for deviceless integrate or deviceless remote monitoring or device-based monitoring, right? And on the device list side, that means things like patient reported outcome surveys. It means things like asking patients to uh, just text in a copy of, let's say, a, um, a blood sugar measurement that they may be taking or something like that, right? Um, it, could, it could be something um, entirely different from that, right? Where you're just asking them a survey, right? And then the device-based side, we have a spectrum of integrations that we have built with smart devices across 
Apple-based devices, uh, Fitbits, accelerometers, uh, SpO2 machines, CPAP machines, CGM devices, weight scales, things like that. Um, and what we'll functionally do is say, we'll identify populations that are actually eligible for, for remote monitoring interventions um, based on you know, just indications and based on information that we've qualitatively collected from them. And then leverage a lot of that information. And after we've administered the device to them, we'll procure the devices for the site. Uh, we'll actually go through the process of getting them to the patients and put them through an entire text-based education program that guides them through how to set up the device and what the purpose of that device is, which is, has been a critical step for driving engagement. And then after they're using it, use that device data to actually inform what types of messages we are sending to them, right? So we, at the end of the day, view engagement as the, the core driver of how this intervention would perform, right? And we'll send them, what you're seeing is an example of like a PDF, which gives them an overview of what their entire care journey is. We'll send them text-based messages. We'll send them alerts saying, hey, you need to make sure you schedule transportation to your visit. And if you haven't, you need to reschedule a visit at this phone number, different things like that. Um, collect a lot of that device-based data and conduct something called event-based triggering where let's say that we're collecting CGM data, right? Um, use that to send out intelligent surveys asking a patient, hey, we saw that this, metric was, you know, your, your blood sugar was uh, 120 at the fasting, um, there, you had a fasting blood sugar of 120, right? Ask them a question about, you know, have you taken, did you miss your last dose of insulin, right? And then aggregate that quantitative and qualitative data from both the text-based intervention and the engagement piece, and then the device-based data to quite literally generate a report for the clinicians, an example of what you're seeing here of, one, this is how much time you spent reviewing this data, these are the concerns that you addressed. This is the full history of messaging that we have with the patient. And this is exactly how much time you spent manually communicating with the patient. And as a result of all of that, these are the appropriate billing codes that you can actually claim, right? Um, and we will have like an entire matrix that we'll put together around commercial and SI, around uh, you know CMS codes and different things like that on a site-by-site -site basis. So end-to-end -end from actually procuring the device to getting reimbursed, for implementing it or tracking how the patient is performing and identifying who's at risk, uh, we've helped organizations manage that. Um, some really quick statistics and outcomes that we've seen. So we've seen that implementing interventions like this through Memora's platform, we have published data on this, has reduced readmission rates by almost 16%, and that patients are you know, coming in and, and being activated on the platform at a rate of almost 92%, um, which is you know, groundbreaking compared to portal interventions and, and other interventions and app interventions, which are traditionally less than 30%. And that kind of brings me to, to the last component that I want to mention, which is just some core outcomes that we've seen. So one of the biggest components of Memora is one, that we tie everything to some financial data point around how is this actually saving you money or generating additional revenue. And then second is just because we are collecting this data on your patients, does not necessarily mean that we are effectively displaying it to the clinicians, right? So we're able to engage patients at an extremely high rate using a lot of the practices that I mentioned and collect data from these patients at a rate of well over, you know, 20 data points per month, which is sufficient for the reimbursement metrics. And on the flip side of that, we're also reducing the number of notifications that clinicians are receiving by well over 60% because we're accurately filtering out data that may not necessarily be actionable and then second, identifying which data points, you know, will, will require some sort of intervention from the clinician. And ultimately, as a result of both time that we're saving, as well as a combination of, um, you know, additional reimbursement and all of those components, we are quite literally saving systems $670 on average per patient that they may have under management at that point in time. Um, and that's data that we validated from, from well over six different sites. Which brings me to the last point around, the goal at the end of the day of RPM interventions, engagement related interventions, uh, you know, any sort of risk assessment that you may be doing or scheduling, whatever it is, is to put patients through this journey where, you know, you want to kind of guide them or give them almost like this virtual assistant experience of this is exactly what you should be expecting. And this is an overview of what the next six weeks of your journey look like. And this device is fundamentally going to help you make sure that you are on top of your care. It's going to identify the incentives of, you know, why does this someone not want to come back to the, the hospital, right? It's going to, uh, interventions like this are obviously going to help patients understand why it's important to, to actually use devices like this and get high engagement from them and stuff like that, right? Um, 
and this is almost an example of the, the journey that a lot of patients will go through at sites that have implemented Bemora. Awesome. I will go ahead and stop there um, and, and leave room for questions.